And that's how I was able to outsmart an entire group of ogres. By hiding in a bog. I'd rather keep my gold and my life than my cleanliness. I can always wash away the grime in a tavern. I can't wash away my lost life. That's very true. You and I both know that guile is more important than brawn most of the time. We are in the same profession, after all. What do you mean, the same profession? I spied those thieves' tools the moment I found you all. I am not a thief, thank you very much. These are rogue's implements, and I am a rogue by profession. It is very different from being a common thief. Oh, I? And what do you do that's so different from what I did with my dwarven party? Well, I'll have you know that aside from dealing with traps and opening locked doors and treasure chests that we don't have the keys for, and being a mean shot with a sling, I am the indispensable and irreplaceable moral bastion of the party. <coughs> You're laughing at me, aren't you, Lilava? No, no, why would I do that? I wouldn't do that, of course not. No, <laughs> no. Thanks for that. Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play The Eye of the Beholder 3, Assault on Mithranor. And when last we left off, we've encountered our fifth party member in Ishan, a fighter thief that's able to use this polearm that we got in the first game from the middle ranks, which means that we now have four people in the all attack group. Really useful. We want to move through here, but this square beyond the door appears to be somewhere where enemies are triggered. It's a really good way to get experience, but we want to move forward. So instead of stepping forward and then stepping back, we're going to quickly move forward and take out all of these foes. Both of the shadows were dealt with, with one all attack, and everyone is gone. That was very well taken care of. We have had plenty of experience with far trickier foes. Let's press on. These stairs lead to over here, and to some weird, gooey-like substance on the floor. That could be poisonous, or it could be there to impede our movement. Let's find out which it is by stepping forward. Yep, this is sticky goo, alright. We can't move very quickly. And this is a perfect place for a trap. Case in point. But no trap is going to defeat us. And that trap wasn't a very dangerous one. Let's keep moving, shall we? Not only is this an area that's difficult to navigate and difficult to turn to face threats, it's an area that pads out the game a tiny bit. Not very much. If the entire floor had this, that would definitely be a floor of padding. As it stands, it's just a minor inconvenience that I thought would poison us. But it doesn't seem like it's going to. We're nearly to this door, and hopefully the door will be openable with a button. And it is! Anyone in here? No? Oh, and we've just been hit by a foe that was behind us. Has anything happened? Nope, it would seem like nothing has happened. You're still level 10, and that's good. Let's open this door and see what lies beyond. I see a button. And something that we can't open because we don't have a key. Yes, this does require one of those keys. Well, let's read this then. Press button for service. This is going to open up a pit, isn't it? Considering the last few buttons that we've pressed, probably. But we may need to. Why do you think that? Call it a hunch. Brace yourselves, everyone. Do we really have to do that? Ow! It barely hurt. It wasn't a big drop. And there's a key. Press for service, and service was delivered. A very clever trap. And we've been brought right back to here. Let's see where this leads. Let's be ready. Nothing. Hmm. I don't trust this, but I see something we should open. Well spotted. Thank you. I believe this may be what the captain needs to see. This is Captain Flar's nameplate. Maybe this is something that we need to put in that, uh, thing that we found in the first area on this floor. 
Maybe. For now, we need to head back the way we came. And standing here doesn't appear to make any enemies appear, so let's slowly move back by making sure we aren't staring at a wall. The last thing we want to do is stare at a wall and have enemies attack us. So very slowly, we're going to inch forward and go the one way that we can go, which is, oh, hello. There was one foe, let's keep moving quickly and get to here. And there's another foe and two more. Nice try. That we were ready for you. This is the only way we can move now. Maybe we'll find another one of those plates down here. Or maybe we'll find more pits to fall down. Nothing here? Oh look, another plaque. The spirit moves in mysterious ways. Oh dear. That looks like a pit puzzle. I do not like pit puzzles, but I find pit puzzles to be quite tricky sometimes. So let's save and see what it's all about. So if we step forward, the pit moves. Hmm. Maybe it will just keep moving away. Or maybe it won't. That is now behind us. And now... There's a pit in front of us, but we could move back. And moving back gets rid of all the pits. That was not a very difficult puzzle at all. Fairly self-explanatory. Let's move forward and not get complacent. Agreed. There could be anyone behind here. As you step into the chamber, the spirit of a fallen warrior materializes before you. Raising his sword, the ghost booms, Guards! Guards! We have intruders! Let us try and talk to this ghost. Who are you? What are you? I am Vla, captain of Mithjanor's army. You must surrender your arms to the guards, and then we will talk about what you are doing here. Were you hit on the head or something? What's wrong with you? Nothing is wrong with me, aside from the fact that the lives of many brave warriors rest in my hands. The Army of Doom is upon us, and I have to lead the stand. And no, I wasn't hit on the head. Just who are you anyway? We are heroes of Waterdeep. We were sent forth to investigate the evil in this land. There is no army of doom. There are no other warriors here. The evil invaded this place long ago, and was successful in keeping control of it. There will be no final stand. It's over for you. Indeed, you did fall in that last battle. You succeeded in killing many of the enemy's soldiers. You died a hero. That is why you were buried in this warrior's tomb. No one disputes the valor of your deeds. Here is the plaque that marks your death, Captain. It is time for you to rest. You have earned it. I cannot believe my own eyes. Truly, I am dead. The darkness did take my city. I would weep had I tears of the living. I thank you for releasing me from this half-living limbo. If you are truly here to investigate the evil, you will need this to safely pass through the forest. It is a medallion of friendship. The medallion will let the trees in the forest know that you are friends, and they will not hinder you in any way. But beware, the monsters in the forest will show you no such concern. And now I have suddenly grown very tired. I will now seek my escape from this world. Goodbye, young heroes. May you restore Mithranor's glory. I believe we have done a great thing. I agree, Rune. His spirit is finally at rest. And we have the Medallion of Friendship. You should wear that, Valendra. I shall. And with that we can safely go through the trees that were surrounding the area we started in, I imagine, 
without them getting angry. And here's a way for us to go back to here. Well, that was an expedient shortcut if ever I've seen one. Maybe there is something to this area that we were in before. We have an orb. Maybe we can use the orb to our advantage. What thing are you referring to? We'll show you, don't worry. Ho hold on to this for us, would you? I certainly can. We found a thing over here, and lots of these clubs. It's worth an investigation, if nothing else. Let's go back to here and see what happens if, uh, of course, saving beforehand, if we put the uh, orb that we found into here. There we go. Now, can we put these in? It doesn't fit. So we need to uh, see if we can get three rods. I imagine uh, ones are not going to work. No, they don't fit. We appear to be part way towards solving a puzzle, but we need more, clearly. Then let's go and find more. Clearly that medallion was not all the treasures that were here. You can uh, have this, by the way, Sandstar. Thank you, I'll wear it with... Is it actually magical? It has minor enchantments, but I wouldn't say it's especially powerful. I'll still wear it. You never know, it might have some other ability that we don't know about. What I do know is that our spells are starting to expire. We should probably check out the southern stairs in the main area. We haven't been that way yet. But we'll rest first. And rest we shall. Let's get all of our spells back after getting that medallion of friendship. I wonder if this area is completely optional, if you actually need the Medallion of Friendship at all. Does it do anything apart from, uh... It doesn't seem to increase our stats at all. It's probably just there for, uh, plot reasons, and so that we can pass the trees, and they know that we're their friends. Trees that are alive are not something that is peculiar in D&D. It's definitely something that you can encounter. There we go. A little bit more buffing here, prayer, and then aid on Sandstar, and then we will head to the south. Also, I didn't check out that room full of shadows that just waited for us. They were clearly waiting for some reason, and I did not want to find out what that reason was. Let's move forward. And of course, be careful. Well, that's not a good welcoming party. We can deal with them, though. They will fall to my blade, and to my righteousness, like all foes that work for evil do. Let's see if there's anyone else here. There's an area over here that we can have a look at, and there's nothing here. But there are more of those zombie-like foes that I'm pretty sure aren't zombies. They're going to be something different. Anything in here? No, nothing in here at all. Was this a trap that spawned enemies elsewhere? It would seem not. I don't like it when it gets quiet. I suspect that our enemies are plotting something. The undead are very intelligent when they want to be. What does this say? For each path that may be taken, another surely shall be given. There's only one thing we can do, and that's to step on this. And that opens up there. And only that way, it would seem. Nothing over here? No. Then the only way that we can go is forward. And we're going to save before we go forward, because this could be a place where it would shut behind us. Oh! Well, we could go this way instead, if we chose to. Hmm, which way do we want to go? We'll go this way first. What is down here? Enemies? Danger? Well, there's peril. 
but only a minor amount of peril. Just one foe and a door. Let's go down here first and explore just in case. Well, there's another foe that caught me completely by surprise. I wasn't expecting one, even though I said that I was expecting one. Ooh. Rations? No one here. Rations? And a mage scroll of fireball. I'll hold on to this, just in case we find another wizard. I take it you already know how to make a fireball. I am well versed in fireballs. Oh, he's very well versed in fire. Don't look at me like that, it was a compliment. Let's go to this door. Anything in here? Apart from more peril? No peril at all, actually. We have a rod fragment. Ah, this is one of the things that we were looking for, for that thing. Whatever it does. Keep a hold of that. And let's go back to this and see if we can open up a different way. That closes... No, that doesn't close it at all. How do we close it? Do we have to stand on it for a while? No. Do we have to approach it from a different angle? No, that's just given us one rod fragment and nothing else. I wanted to go and get all of the rod fragments that are here, but it would seem like uh, we can only get one at present, unless we go back and uh, for each path that may be taken, another surely shall be given. I want to see about getting... Ah, there we go! We can now go down the middle path. Let's go down the middle path and inevitably find more peril. We haven't found any peril! Doors. We'll try this one first. Well, that was the wrong door, clearly. I don't even see any goodies behind them. There may still be goodies. There is peril, though, as well. Peril that will be overcome. And goodies! Marvelous! Another fireball scroll. And more food. And a potion of giant strength. That's very useful. What about in here? More enemies. And we're definitely going to back up because there appear to be a lot of foes in here. But we can easily deal with all of them. And I see a button right there. These buttons are very obvious. And we found another rod fragment. Two down, one to go. Was there anything else here? No. And so back we go, back to here, so that we can open up the final way, so that we can go and uh, get the final bit of the rod fragment. Now that's not going to uh, open up the area that's inevitably going to be over there. How are we going to open that up? There's clearly something that I'm missing here in the way that we approach. Do I have to go into this alcove and... Yes! Actually, it is the alcoves that do it! Well, I figured out that puzzle! We have one thing left to find. And a door! Do we want to go this way first, or do we want to go down where there isn't a door. I think we'll go this way first, because this way is more likely to have enemies that will try and flank us. Then again, there are just loads of doors here, full of enemies, of course. Enemies that are relatively easy to take care of. So we'll go this way now. Over to here and find even more enemies. Enemies that have barely managed to get a single hit on us. And there are even more foes slowly lurching forward. But the undead are not a problem here. Not for this party. Here is another rod fragment. We now have three of them. And that's brilliant.
where are we uh, keeping the other two? The other two are here. They were uh, not the colour of the rod fragment that was in my hand, because we were holding that one. That's why I got confused. As for what's in the other direction here, let's have a look. The last way we can go. And probably a way full of more monsters that must be bested. We will deal with all of you. And we will open this door and deal with those beyond. Oh, there are quite a few beyond for you to deal with, Velendra. And goodies! A cleric scroll of cure serious wounds. A magical trident. I don't think we've had a trident as a weapon yet. And some rations. We don't need the rations, but we can go over here and open up this and find nothing. And so, when we come back, folks, I think we will uh, head out of here and go and see what those uh, fragments we've been collecting are actually used for. Hopefully it's going to be a really nice goodie. Or maybe it's a way to completely bypass going through an area. You never quite know with uh, things like magical portals. I'm just glad that there is a magical portal in this game, much like the ones we encountered in either Beholder 2 and 1. Then again, maybe I'm being a bit too presumptuous in thinking that it is a magical portal. It certainly looks like one, though we need a lot more to activate this one than the other two that we found before. Well, there were many in the first game, but there was only one in the uh, second. Well, a pair of them. So there wasn't just one. Ignore what I'm saying! Clearly I'm not making any sense. And so, when we come back, folks, we're not finding any enemies here, which is good, and we're going to pop downstairs and activate that thing that we found. And I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later.